like and subscribe. Now. What is an amazing movie that has a god awful sequel? This thread might as well be. Movies I didn't know had sequels. Mean Girls. They made a sequel. They, as in the people who made the original. Not really. It was a TV film. And the only cast member to return was Tim Meadows who played the principal. They shouldn't have tried to make Mean Girls 2 happen. American Psycho 2 didn't even start as a sequel, but they decided to make it one for a quick buck. Let's see Paul Allen's sequel. Oh my god. It even has a watermark. Mila Kunis, who played the protagonist, said that it was a different project when she signed up for it, which later got re-edited when there were rumors that they might make a third one. She said, please somebody stop this. Write a petition. Who oh boy. Mid-2000s entertainment journalism lore. In the first few seconds of the article it describes her as a ravishing, doe-eyed brunette who plays a feasty beyond wheels. TL. Dr. Miller Kunis stated she was horrified by the fact she made this film, and was happy it went straight to video. I love The Mummy Return, but the third one was just horrible. Yes, the first two are so entertaining and cool with the Egyptian lore. The third one was like something Netflix would try to pull off if they couldn't get Rachel Weisz. Why not just kill her off between movies and write the new actress as someone else? I never got that. Have Eva's death and Rick's new relationship be the reason why he's estranged from his son? It would still overall suck as a movie, but at least it'd be better than having an actress who doesn't look, sound or act like Rachel Weisz's pretend to be the same beloved character. The butterfly effect. I feel like the directors of the sequels felt asleep watching the first movie and Final Destination and wake up mixing the two franchises, but not understanding none of them. The second one was really dumb, but I thoroughly enjoyed the third. It reinvented the premise enough, so it was still entertaining. Being able to jump back to other time frames, not just your own memories was pretty great. Starship Troopers. Jarhead. Jarhead is a sad one. The original is based on a dude's memoirs, while the rest are generic support the troops. Action movies about militants storming an embassy or pilots being shot down. It's baffling that someone looked at a Sam Mendes movie about ennui during wartime and the psychological toll of the Gulf War and made generic straight to video action sequels. There can't be a big audience overlap there, yeah. Jarhead and Starship Troopers will always be the two movies where I just deny that anything else came out afterward, because the sequels missed the point of the original so badly. I think the original Jart is the most effective anti-war movie ever, in the sense that a lot of great anti-war movies depict war as being horrible, but do so in a way that is still engaging to a potential recruit, like, take the ride of the Valkyries scene in Apocalypse Now, which is supposed to show brutality and chaos. But most people watching, get a hell yeah out of it. Jarhead on the other hand, shows war as being absolutely mind-bogglingly boring. There is no better slap of reality to a kid watching it than scene after scene of other kids dicking around doing nothing but being bored out of their minds. While the cool stuff happens elsewhere, and by design they are meant to miss all the action. Highlander. Got my buddies to go see it in the theater. We all agreed to walk out halfway through. Embarrassing trying to explain to them how good the first one was. They were like yeah right. Lunch is on UB. Slapshot. The fact they even made that steaming pile of garbage of a sequel all those years later was insulting to the original. Just pretend Guna Slapshot 2 and you're good to go. Oh god. We just watched Surf's Up to that was paid for by the WWE. My senior year of high school we had to make a TED talk about a subject of our choice. A close friend of mine gave a passionate speech about Surf's Up and how it deserved a better sequel. Gonna have to agree. Surf's Up recently entered my 4 year old's movie rotation. Forgot it was an actual good movie. Glad I missed the sequel somehow. The sequel is really not good. I really really tried. But Earth's Up is one of my favorite animated movies, and WWE ruined it as a viable franchise. My favorite part of Surf's Up is the film style. They created a full 3D environment with tons of stuff happening all at once and sometimes even off screen, like you would find on a real movie set. It's a very unique film style, and it has stayed as a favorite for years. Surf's Up is such a fun little movie. I'm going to pretend like I never saw that this exists. Surf's Up is so good. For sure it is by far the best documentary about penguins that I have had the pleasure of seeing. 
Independence Day, 20 years we waited, and that's the best they got, honorable mention to Pacific Rim. Independence Day, I worked at the VFX studio, that did the majority of the effects for the sequel. It was a complete mess from start to finish, there was constant wouldn't it be cool if, happening, meaning the film mutated into a strange parody of itself, you could tell. I said it earlier in the comments here there's a sudden snap, where it becomes Jeff Goldblum being Jeff Goldblum reacting to the dialogue. The Pacific Rim sequel made me so sad. They did some amazing world building in the first one and supplementary comic books describing the background lore. Then they took what made the first one so great and just C.I.E.I.E.I. Also, why kill of Mako? She was so bad eh, and had personality, character development and so much potential. And only to replace her with O.H.H. Yeah. This is a new love interest, stock character with tits, zero explanation, zero reason. Every time I see John Boyega, he's playing a character who should have an awesome story, but is stuck in a shtai movie. The Mask, in an interview about Son of the Mask, Jamie Kennedy, star of the movie, called it the crappiest piece of crap in the crap store, took a look at his IMDB page, the bulk of his work is from projects that rated 5 stars or less. When I was a kid, I for some reason got obsessed with the second one, and would watch it over and over again. My poor parents, same. And back in the day we had an sub with a built-in DVD player. My copy of Son of Mask spent lots of time in that car. The dance sequence in Son of the Mask and its vanilla rice interpretation of can't take my eyes off of you still haunt me to this day. If it hasn't been mentioned yet, they destroyed Disney's Atlantis with Atlantis 2. It was supposed to be a series I like. They had three episodes done when it was canned. So they stuck them together and called it a movie. Which is sad because I was like I wanna see more adventures. Please, Atlantis, let us never speak of this again as to preserve the sanctity of an ancient civilization. Atlantis 2. Ah, F it. Highlander. There should have only been one. The combination of factors that made the first one a hit was very unlikely to be repeated. A cool but underdeveloped mythology, seen Carnery and Clancy Brown drinking before the job, tons of silliness and humor, a crazy director, you forgot one very important thing, Queen. It's all about Clancy for me, literally made him the goat of a lame voice actor for me. Speed, I think it was called the bus, that couldn't slow down. It's like Speed 2, except on a bus instead of a boat. It was just like Speed 2, except it was a bus instead of a boat. Milhouse Van Houten, yeah. The chemistry between Kinu and Sandra was electric point they both admitted, fairly recently, to have had crushes on each other at the time but neither pursed. Can't even recall the dude from the sequel, only William Dafoe's crazy eyes. Such a dud, they both admitted, fairly recently, to have had crushes on each other at the time but neither pursed. Probably for the best. I've heard relationships, based on intense experiences never work. That's the one with the boat right. Saw scenes from that movie, but not the whole thing. But the boat would have stopped way sooner JFC. Speed 2 is a great film, to watch in an extremely non-serious way. If you know anything at all about boats, or anything, really. It's so, so laughably bad. Highlights are, a cruise ship which works off remote control makes absolutely no sense. Even if you could work the controls, these things need a decent sized engine room crew to keep them going. There are floodable ballast tanks, not too unreasonable, that are fully furnished with cabins inside. Wait what, the oil tanker they nearly collided with was very obviously empty. It's sitting very high in the water. The ship's propeller is spinning at about 3000 rpm. Ships that size will have a prop RPM of maybe 500 maximum. Said propeller is completely stopped by a wee bit of rope. No, they use the bow thrusters to turn the ship at speed. These things are for maneuvering in port, and can turn the bow a degree or so a minute when stationary. The ship collides with the quay side, and just keeps fine going for 3 miles, destroying everything in its path. You probably don't need an expert to tell you it would stop dead when it hit the land. Really though the funniest thing about this film, is that the people in charge of making the sequel to a film, called Speed chose just about the slowest form of transport. Donnie Docco, S Darko was trash, Donnie Docco was great, not sure why they even thought of making a second film, it's not like some of the other movies on this list, that were major hits, so it made fiscal sense to milk the eye. Donnie Darko was a more of a cult hit from what I gathered. 
The Descent. To anyone wondering what made it so bad I'll give you a little of the start of the movie. After the sole survivor from the first movie makes it out of the cave in the prequel we start our sequel. She goes to the cops to tell them what happened in the cave. The two or three cops then take this traumatized woman and make her go with them back into said cave full of monsters. She didn't even actually make it out in the original. At least that's how I interpreted it. One of my favorite scary movies has all the things that make me go nope. Tiny underground caves. Dark water that creeps me out something fierce. The sequel disappointed me so much and should be avoided. The Mask of Zorro with Antonio Banderas, Catherine Zeta-Jones and Anthony Hopkins is one of my favorite movies of all time. Literally top 5 for me. The follow-up, The Legend of Zorro, is one of my top 5 disappointments. I don't know why. I guess it's just like a pain by numbers rehash. All the excitement, the freshness, the adventure, the heart, it's all gone in the second one. It's like the actors and writers came back and said alright I guess we gotta do this again then. It was the addition of the child actor sub protagonist that made it weak. Especially that sequence where the kid was sword fighting with his teacher and all of the kids were cheering him on. And then he jumped out the school and blew a kiss to the crowd. Holy cow that film was cringe. They made the same mistake most sequels with romance make. In the sequel, the romance is gone. And it's just an arguing couple with an annoying kid. Kadishak. What is the best golf movie? Kadishak. What is the worst golf movie? Kadishak second. I don't claim credit. I remember that joke from the ESPN commercial bump for some golf tournament they were going to show. This was years ago. They were interviewing Kadis from the PGA Tour. Asking what the best movie about Kadis ever made was. I Ike. Phantom of the Opera. Ike technically it's not a movie movie. But Love Never Dies sucks. Oh dear god. I read the synopsis for that. And it feels like a self insert fan fiction. That's because it is fan fiction. If you've read the book, the phantom dies at the end of it. The Crow. I dunno. The crows have eyes third. The crowning was pretty good. Had to scroll way too far for this one. Dr. Clara Mandrake was delightfully unhinged. The disrespect to Brandon Lee. Titanic 2. Let that sink in. I see what you did there. Also, wait. They made a sequel. How? It's the cheap exploitation B movie. Basically the same story on a remake of the Titanic in the present day. Eddie and the Cruisers was very good. Not amazing. Eddie and the Cruisers second. Eddie Lives was an embarrassment. Some of the worst acting ever. Saturday Night Fever was great. Staying Alive was an embarrassment. Some of the worst acting ever. Jaws. Michael Caine on why he took a role in Jaws 4. I have never seen the film. But by all accounts it was terrible. However, I have seen the house that it built, and it is terrific. Sums up Jaws sequels. This reminds me of an interview with Anthony Hopkins on why he took the role in Mission Impossible 2. The hoops he jumped through, to justify it as an interesting role. That he really did imagine he was actually Daniel Day Lewis in that movie, when it was quite clear, he knew he was taking a paycheck. He just didn't want to say something mean spirited about people, who paid him a lot of money. I like Hopkins answer better, it may be less honest, but it's more kind. Roger Ebert once recounted how Rob Schneider sent him a kind note after his surgery, and wrote, Nobody starts out to make a bad movie. Independence Day, it's like they threw the sequel script together during a cheap coke bender, and what kills me about that is the fact that they had like two decades to come up with something good. Soon after the success of the first film, 20th Century Fox paid Dean Devlin a large sum of money to write a script for a sequel. However, after completing the script, Devlin didn't turn in the script and instead gave the money back to the studio, as he felt the story didn't live up to the first film. It was only approximately 15 years later that Devlin met up with Roland Emmerich to try again. Having felt that they had cracked a story for a sequel, I wish it was better. The worst part for me about the sequel is when they mention the one ship that landed in Africa and they spent years fighting aliens inside. That sounded like a way cooler movie. Mulan. This was a direct 2 video one. No. Disney had a habit of basically recycling all their rights around the early aughts and making cheap and weak direct 2 video sequels. There was a whole bunch of them. Lion King. Aladdin. Hunchback of Notre Dame. Lady the Tramp. 101 Dalmatians. A bunch of others. 
Disney's animation studios were having some real trouble trying to put together something decent around this period. The one that I would say was half decent was Lion King 1 and 1 half, which I always referred to as Timon and Pumbaa are dead, because it basically gives those two characters the Ross and Krantz and Guildenstern treatment. Since the existentialism, Lion King 2 is an extremely serviceable sequel. It's not the original, but it's like a second helping. Yes WTF. I scrolled too long to find this one like who the actual f thought it was a good idea to make Mushu the villain. Mod Eddie Murphy didn't, which is why he doesn't voice Mushu, who the actual f thought it was a good idea to make Mushu the villain. Mod okay, now I'm actually interested. The Exorcist 2 is sham of movie. It was just so goofy to be the sequel to one of the greatest horror movies of all time. The third one is absolutely incredible though. Grease. Even White Gold hates the sequel. Grease 2 is deeply loved by people who were about 12 when it re-ran constantly on cable. I'm in this comment and I don't like it. The never ending story. Insert obvious joke here. Wasn't Jonathan Brandis in the sequel, though. I can't complain about anything that featured him. I'm still sad that he's gone. Dragonhead. There's like 4 or 5 of them now. Only the first movie is good. Holy f nobody I have ever met has even seen the movie. All the movies after the first one are straight trash. How are the dragons from a movie made in 1996 still looking better than the dragons in every sequel? Good gravy. Just look them up. 3 had Ben Kingsley. 4th had Patrick Stewart. V had Helena Bonham Carter and came out last year. V had Helena Bonham Carter and came out last year. What? Miller. The animated Disney film. They released Mulan to straight to DVD, and it was honestly bad. All the straight to DVD Disney sequels, do they even count? There were some good ones, namely, The Lion King 2nd, Simba's Pride 101 Dimensions 2, Patch's London Adventure Cinderella 3, A Twist in Time Aladdin and The King of Thieves The Lion King 1 and 1 Half Tarzan 2nd Lilo and Stitch 2, Stitch has a glitch Bambi 2nd. Battle Royale. The first movie was an amazing piece of cinema. The second one sucked dead penguin a-holes. Pacific Rim. Del Toro was ready to go on the sequel, but the studio dragged their feet so long. He was no longer available. Still can't get over how they did Mako Mori dirty. The worst thing for me is how they messed up the sense of scale. The action in the first worked so well because it all felt heavy and meaty and rooted in reality. The camera angles from the ground gave a real sense of scale and the slow but powerful movements of the jigas with the thrusters on the arms and sh made it all feel right. The sequel was like Transformers with everything moving too fast and easily. I actually never watched the second film due to me assuming literally all that you said was true after watching the reveal trailer. A quick 2 minute trailer showed more than enough for me to find out this would be a dumpster fire of a movie. And I was right. Sadly. Yup. Needing rockets to make a fast punch etc. Second one is like no wait. The part one thought was ridiculous was when that Chinese CEO lady got in the hamster wheel for the tiny Jika and started running. She went from extremely graceful to toddler shuffling on the concrete with wet socks. Oh my god. Came here to say this too. Loved the Og movie. The second one made no sense. The only bright spot is Charlie Day becoming the villain with his brain wife sex slave. One aspect of the first film that was lost on the sequel was the weight of everything. The Jijas moved like they were huge heavy machines in the first one which added an element of realism and really gave you an idea of how much power was behind each one. Sequel was just sheer Transformers without even transforming. Who knew you could make such an amazing action film with good lore and concepts and turn it into such dumpster fire. Speed. Explains why Kinu no doubt after seeing script. Taken. At what point do you just forget about your relatives that keep getting kidnapped? This summer, one man, one cousin of his best friend's sister's dentist's hairdresser once removed with Liam Neeson in Taken 19. Number. Dumb and Dumber. Not for nothing. But there are few movies on earth that can make me laugh like Dumb Dumber. Pull over. What? Pull over. No. It's a cardigan. But thanks for noticing. Gets me every time. That John Denver's full of sh- man. Joe Dirt and Zoolander. 
those two were perfect early 2000s comedies and they did not need sequels, especially Joe Dirt, because that one was especially terrible, I didn't even know there was a sequel to Joe Dirt, yes, it is called Joe Dirt 2, beautiful loser, it came out on crackle, you know what's crazy, I watched Joe Dirt 2 specifically, when it came out, because I was such a big fan of the first one and I can honestly say I have no idea what happened in the sequel, my mind knows it happened, I know I watched it, but I couldn't tell you anything, that happened in it. The Spongebob Movie, SM1, Spongebob and Patrick set out on a road trip adventure not realizing that the fate of Bikini Bottom lies in their hands as Plankton's most ingenious plan unfolds. SM2, not Painty the Pirate steals the secret formula and Spongebob can't make the patty from memory for some dumb reason. So they journey to the surface for like 10 minutes after Spongebob and Plankton go on a meaningless acid trip to fill up the feature time. SM3, okay fans, we'll give you a road trip adventure, but not without shoehorning this stupid spin-off preview that doesn't make sense. The first Spongebob movie is a masterpiece, the second one isn't as amazing narratively, but I laugh my head off every time I watch it, and think it stands up, just as well as the first one, but the third one was just a promo for Camp Coral. There's been a few, that really stood out to me, I first watched Marley, pretty good, then I saw Marlini, and it didn't make any sense. Is Bob Marley supposed to be reincarnated into the dog? Then you've got 28 Days, the movie with Sandra Bullock. I then watched the sequel, 28 Days Later, and man, things really got out of hand quick in the world in just another month. I think they could done a better job explaining just how Sandra Bullock's character going into a hab led to a zombie apocalypse. The weirdest trilogy is Remember the Titans. Clash of the Titans, and Revenge of the Titans. Then almost 10 years later they made a show just called Titans. Super confusing. The Land Before Time. Think there's like 15 sequels. Narratively the first Land Before Time is leagues ahead of all the others. The latter movies have some great songs though. I still find myself singing Big Water decades later. Friends for dinner. Chinatown Point the two Jakes just isn't good. Not immediate sequels but can't imagine Beethoven 3 or Home Alone 3, onward, were any good, I can't help, but cringe watching the Home Alone films that don't have Culkin, and there are so many, I've never seen Home Alone 3, but have heard, that it's not bad, if you consider it as a standalone movie in a different universe, rather than a sequel, Sin City, I don't think the second one was even rated up, 